Hallelujah. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus with all of your heart? Tell him how much you love him. Just talk to him right now. Just tell him how much you love him. Just tell him. Just talk to Jesus, to the one that you love, the one that your heart longs for. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just you and Jesus right now. You just Jesus just standing before you and, and looking on you right now. And you are expressing to him about how much you love him and how much you need him and how desperate you are for him. Just you and Jesus right now. Tell him. Tell Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we praise you. We worship you. We thank you, oh, God, for all that you have done for us. We thank you, Jesus, for the blood, for your blood, for your blood, for your blood, for your blood that cleanses us, that washes us, that purifies us, that sets us up before you. Oh, God, holy and pure and righteous by the blood, by the blood, by the blood, by the blood of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You are my hope. You are my victory. You are my desire. You are my passion. You are my everything, oh God. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, there is nothing, nothing I'd rather have than you, oh Lord. There is nothing, oh God. Nothing, oh God. Lord, you are my desire. You are my hope. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Father, we worship you. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you tonight will just get out of all the busyness of the day and all of the things that the enemy has just held you back with over the past however long he's been holding you back, and you will begin to think about when you touch Jesus, the times that you have touched the realms of the Spirit and you have been so impacted by His glory, you've been changed from glory to glory. He touched you so deep down into your soul that you felt like you was going to explode. You felt like light beams were shooting from you. Just think about what He's done for you. Begin to think about how good He's been to you. Begin to think about how He delivered you from sin and the powers of Satan, how he destroyed the bondages and the powers of darkness that held you captive and how he set you free. Begin to think about that. Move on over into that realm of glory and say, Father, tonight, tonight, Lord God, I want to go deeper than I've ever gone before. Father, you have touched me. Father, that glory that you've touched me with has been so wonderful. Oh, Lord, that time, that time, Lord God, when you touched me and I thought I was going to explode with the glory. Now, tonight, oh God, I want to see you. I want to behold you like I've never beheld you before. Lord, I want to go deeper than I've ever gone before. Lord, I want to put away the things, oh God, that have been trying to pull me back. Lord God, I want to stand up against the lies of the enemy that have been trying to push me back in a corner and tell me I can't be more than a conqueror. Father, the lies of the enemy that have been trying to zap my, my strength from me, my worship, my praise from me. Father, I push those things back right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, and I'm going to press in. I'm going to press in. Lord, right now we're going to press in. Lord, right now we're going to press in. Lord, right now we're going to press in. We're going to touch the realms of heaven. We're going to touch the realms of glory. Father, we're going to see and behold you. Father, tonight we're going to be changed into your image and in your likeness from glory to glory, Father. Tell, oh God, we're going to go after you, Father, until all people can see in us is Jesus. Oh, Father God, so we know, Father, that we have eternity <laughs> of pressing in, oh God. We have the rest of this life of pressing in. Oh, Father, we thank you that when we will see you, we will behold you. For we will be like you and we will see you as you are. Oh, hallelujah. But right now, oh God, we're going to press in to see and behold you like we have not seen and beheld you before. Your glory, Lord. 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 Your glory in this place, oh God. Father God, we praise you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the heat. We thank you, Father, that it's hot. Lord, a lot of us may not like hot, but Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, because this is a little thing. Oh, Lord.
Lord Jesus, none of us are being beheaded right now. We're not watching our children be killed or abused, Father. Father, we're just standing in a place, Father, to see you and behold you and to worship you. And it's a little warm. But, Lord, as we stand here, we pray. We pray right now for the Christians around the world right now that are suffering for the gospel of Jesus Christ. The many Christians, Father, that are being tortured for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for them. Strengthen them. Encourage them. Baptize them afresh in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Father, send forth your word. Send forth your strength. Send forth, Father, your anointing, oh God. Strengthen your people that stand in the face of persecution that don't know, Lord, that, that if they'll live the next minute or not, Lord, what's going to happen? Because, Father, they are standing for you in the very face of death because they claim the name of Jesus. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. Oh, God, let us, Father, let us, Father God, be those, those that stand up, rise up, and push the battle to the gate. Father, those that take a hold of things in the realms of the Spirit. In Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Father, where your people are throughout the nations of the world, and they're being persecuted for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for your glory to show up and be revealed in the place where they're being persecuted. Father, we thank you, God, right now. Father, in the prison cell or wherever they're at, oh God. Father, we just thank you, God, that right now you bring your comfort and your encouragement and that they rise up and they stand up in your glory. And Father, they shine. They begin to shine. They begin to glow with the glory that people have to look at them and see that truly God is in them. Oh, Father God, we ask you to bring a revelation of Jesus to all of these people that are persecuting your saints, oh God. Let them see your goodness. Let them see your mercy. Let them see your loving kindness. Let them see your glory. And let them have a visitation, oh God, of who you are. Father, as your people are standing in the face of death, oh God, and even, even as they're dying, Father, Lord, let it not be in vain. Father, for one second, for one moment, but let your glory be revealed through their life as they offer it up as a living sacrifice. As they offer it up as a sacrifice of their life, their, their literal life, oh God. We thank you, Father, for your glory being revealed. Oh, Lord Jesus, we are so blessed and we are so thankful, oh God. Oh, Father, help us to be thankful in the situations that we are in now. So, Father, we can even be thankful when we, we have opportunities to be persecuted and to be a reproach for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father God, that we will look, oh God, when people look at us as a reproach and they look at us as the off-scouring of the world, oh God, we will rejoice in you and we will be so thankful that we are counted worthy, that we are accounted worthy to suffer for the gospel of Jesus Christ. For if we suffer with you, we will live with you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, we want to count everything all joy now when it's not even that hard, when we, we live such a cush life, oh God. Oh, Father, we, wanna, we don't want to be unthankful in anything. We want to rejoice in you now so we can rejoice in you when the battle really gets rough. <laughs> oh, praise you, Jesus. Father, we want to worship you with all of our heart when it's just warm in a building. Lord Jesus, so we can worship you with all of our heart in the depths of persecution. Oh, Jesus, and we can stand and be your light, and we can stand and be your glory manifested on this earth. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we're thankful that we are able to stand alongside of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And let your glory shine through us that the world can see. That the world can see your glory. That the world can see us clothed in the light and the glory of heaven. <laughs> oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. We give you praise, oh God. We give you praise, oh God. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Say the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
He fills my mouth with laughter. He fills my mouth with laughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for this joy unspeakable that is full of the glory of heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for the joy, 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 joy. Lord Jesus, but we don't want it to be so deep down in our heart that it doesn't show on our face. No, really, if it's deep down in our heart, it's going to show on our face. It's going to be on our countenance. Amen. Out of the abundance of the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in the heart is what comes out of you. So listen to your words. Listen to what's going on in your spirit. Listen to what you are going to allow out of your mouth and say, Lord Jesus, I want to be like you. Lord Jesus, make me like you. Baptize me afresh in the fire of the Holy Ghost. And make me like you. You know, if you're, if you're having a battle, if you're struggling, if sin has been a battle to you, if you seem to be overcome with sin or ungodliness or anything that isn't pleasing to the Lord, I mean just the tongue, the tongue. Any man would think that he's religious and he doesn't bridle his tongue. His religion is in vain. You don't want to be deceived if you can't put a bridle on your tongue. But whatever, if there's anything in your life that you just keep struggling with, it may be one or two, three months, you know, you go and then boom, you get back in this battle. Let me tell you how you will never get in the battle again. I have the answer. You will never go through that same thing again as long as you stay baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost living on the inside of you is not going to go sin. The Holy Ghost, He's holy, He's pure, He's righteous. He's every, every pure, holy, glorious, righteous thing, and there is nothing but purity, holiness, light, and righteousness, and truth in Him. And He's the one that's come to lead us and guide us into all truth, right? He's the one that's come to show us the Father. He's the one that's come to show us the Son. Jesus said He will come, and He will show you, you these things. He will reveal these things. You can't bear all this now. You're not getting it all yet, but when the Holy Ghost comes. When the Holy Ghost comes, He's going to reveal the Father. He's going to reveal the Son. And when the Holy Ghost fire lives on the inside of you, when you're baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost, life isn't going to be a struggle. Sin isn't going to be a struggle. When Jesus is your all in all, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me. See, because that's love relationship. And where that purity of love is, it's the fulfillment of the law. Because love is not going to do evil. Love is not going to hurt. Amen? Most people in their right mind, they're not going to hurt their little baby. They're not going to. They love that baby. You know, those moms, that they're like she bears. They love their children. Now, there's people that are selfish and self-centered and, and wicked and full of the devil. And they, they are abusive to children. But people full of the Holy Ghost, they're not abusive to children. People that know the love of God, they're not abusive. They love them. It's that, you know, it's that pure love relationship. That awesome thing about that, that, that awesome love relationship that we have with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. It's given to us. We don't even have to do that of our own ability. All of it's paid. All of it's given. All we have to do is surrender our lives to Him moment by moment. Moment by moment. And stay in that love relationship and in that fellowship. In that realm of glory all the time. Sin's not coming around that place. It's not there. It isn't. It isn't there. It isn't in the presence of God. I mean, God loves his children, when they're learning to walk with him, he says to the little children, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven, you know, to the children. 
And, and God's good like that, but he wants you to take a hold of this great love that he's given to you. He wants to, you to take a hold of this great fellowship. He wants to take you out of babyhood over into the realms of glory. He wants to reveal the things of heaven to you. He doesn't want you to stay stuck in a struggle. He doesn't want you to stay struck in a, stuck in a battle of just you trying to make it to heaven. He wants to reveal himself in you and through you and to you so you can reveal Jesus to a needy world that needs to see somebody standing in the light and the glory. Standing in the light and the glory. Standing, living in the light and the glory of his goodness. Why do we want to get caught up in the things of this life and the cares of this world? Why do we want to get so busy that we don't put that fellowship and that relationship with Jesus as most important every moment? How? How do we find ourselves so many times caught up in just living and forgetting that we are to present ourselves a living sacrifice? And live in that fellowship and that relationship of sacrifice. That we are dead and buried and raised up together with him. You know, Jesus died one time. He didn't die over and over again. We're dead, buried with him, raised up together with him. So let's sit in heavenly places. Let's live in heavenly places. I'm interested in what Paul experienced. What John experienced. The revelations, being caught up into the third heaven, seeing things that were unspeakable. Abundance, Paul said, he had, a, he had a thorn in the flesh because he had an abundance of revelation. He had so much revelation that he had to have some kind of something that kept him humble because of so much revelation in God. And it wasn't sin. Because you're not going to get revelation of God where there's sin. Because, oh, we thank you, Father, that you are the same today, yesterday, and forever. And you have not changed. And you've called us up to come live with you. You haven't come down to come live with man in their sinful state. But you have redeemed us through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That, oh, we just thank you, Jesus, that you came to destroy the work of the devil. That we are no longer bound by sin. We're no longer bound by the powers of darkness. Sin does not have rule or dominion over us any longer. He does not have dominion over us. We are free. We are free. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Now he says you walk in this. Now you give yourself to this. Now you make sure that all your members are mortified. They're put to death with Christ. That you don't have half of you in the grave with Jesus and the other half of you trying to live to yourself. Amen? So many people, they want Jesus. They like Jesus. Jesus sounds pretty. There's a lot of Muslim people. They like Jesus. He was a good guy. He, would, to them, was a prophet. And, and, you know, they like Jesus. But I tell them, I'm like, well, you know, Jesus said he was the son of the living God, that he came from the Father, that he issued forth from the Father. And if you don't believe what he said, then you have to say he's a liar. So he, you, you, got, you can't be on both sides of the fence. You've got to be on one or the other. Either he's a liar or he was telling the truth. Which one is it? Now make your decision. You know, and we need to make that decision in our life. Either we're dead and buried with him, or we're still living to ourselves. We need to make that decision in him. There's a whole lot of people in church that like Jesus a lot, but they like their sin, and they like their life, and they like their self, and they like what they're doing. And when it comes to laying down their life for someone else, that's too big of a, that's too big of a challenge for them. That's too much. That's too much. So they rise up and they, they defend themselves and they, they have to, you know, go to battle and fight, you know. And, and every one of us, and you, you guys can be seated, every one of us, well, I didn't say you guys, you guys sound good up there, but anyway, but you can. <laughs> but, you know, we look at ISIS and every one of us has seen probably, there's probably, I, I wouldn't think there's anybody in here that hasn't heard what, 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 what the Muslims are doing, the radical Muslims are doing. And, you know, we think that's horrible. And probably all of us think, oh, my goodness, you know, the military, the military needs to just get out there and just bomb the bejeebas out of them and, and get this thing, you know, under control because 
I mean, look at what they're doing. And we're just now seeing more of what they're doing. I mean, they've wiped all the Christians out of Somalia a long time ago. I mean, this isn't new. This has been going on in Africa for years and years and years and years. And they have ju- they completely went into Somalia and just cleaned out every Christian, just killed them, murdered them, every one. So we would think, our enemies, right? And what does Jesus say about our enemies? If our enemy hungers, give him something to eat. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. How does Jesus see these, these radical, fully, totally, completely demon-possessed people? Is he like, let's bomb the bejeebas out of them? Our prayer should be for these people, oh God, reveal your glory to them. Oh, God, may they see your glory. You know, the real army is the army of God's saints that aren't living to themselves, caught up, wrapped up in their situations and in their problems. But the real army that comes out against the powers of darkness is the army of the believer that is taking a hold of God and goes to their knees in prayer and changes the course of history through prayer, changes what's going on on the earth through prayer. Prayer is our place of battle. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. It may look like flesh and blood, but we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. When you have the daily issues in your life that you're wrestling with because somebody offended you or you don't like how somebody else is doing something or this problem, that problem, whatever problem, you can think of what's your own problem. You can think of the battles you're going through because I know everybody's going through a battle. So you can think of the battle and the trial that you're going through that seems like it's so big. And you realize, you take a hold of that thing. You realize that you're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers of darkness. You're, you're wrestling against the wicked powers of darkness that have come out to set themselves against you to try to take you out. And so get, get the battle, get the battle plan laid out. Get the word of God before you and lay out the battle plan. Realize what's going on. Realize what you're doing to counterattack the enemy. I want to look here. I'm not very good with this this mic, and uh, I like the one the um, the lab. It's in um, First Peter chapter five. We'll just start with verse 6. You know, we'll just start with verse 5. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves to the elder, and yea, all of you be subject one to another, and he and, and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. See, the humble is always the key, because God dwells. That's where God dwells. Humble, broken, contrite, always meek, the meekness of Moses. Moses wouldn't step out to defend himself. He let God do the defending. A meek and a humble and a contrite man, God will not despise. He dwells with the broken and the contrite. You know, if, we, if we're stepping up in our self-defense, God's not there. Key point. <laughs> if we have to go, but, 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 you know, this is what happened. We just go, okay, Lord, you take care of it. Father, you know, that, that's our battlefront. Father sees. And when, we, and when we handle it like he handles it, then it all comes together for our good and everyone's good around us. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all of your troubles, all of your trials, all of your burdens, 
all of your financial burdens, all of your, every situation, you cast it all upon him. Cast all those cares, all those cares. So when you get a care, and it's a big care, and it's a care that hurts inside and out, it's a heavy care, what do you do with it? You cast it upon him because he cares for you. He cares for you. Knowing that he cares for you, God is big enough to take care of your situation. God is big enough, and he will. If you'll walk it out like he's told you to walk it out. Because you don't want to be like the children of Israel going around and around in the wilderness for 40 years trying to get to the point that would have just taken them a very short time to get to. Because they couldn't get the point. They couldn't listen. They'd get almost there. Things would go good and then boom. They'd be right back in the middle of trouble. We don't want to be like that. We've got the Holy Ghost. Jesus has paid it all for us. He's paid it all for us. He's paid for the Holy Ghost to come and live and dwell on the inside of us to empower us to be like dynamite force for the kingdom of heaven. Not like wimpy little whiners over what? It's too hot? I mean, you look at that. You look at the size of it's too hot and whining over that in comparison. To, you know, compare it to those that are in prison right now. They're in prison suffering for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we are suffering majorly from heat. You know, people didn't even come to church tonight because it was just too hot. But we see a lot of people here that love Jesus, and they're going to come. If it's too cold, they're going to come if it's too hot. They're going to come if the mosquitoes are biting. They're just going to they're just going to be where Jesus is. And I just thank God, I, you know, and I want to stop and say that. I thank God for the faithful people of the abiding place. I mean, we have the most ma- amazing people on the planet. Nobody knows but us how amazing all of you guys are. And we just thank you guys for everything that you've done, all the labor that you've put in, the perseverance. Just, I mean, it's so exciting to see everybody that's just like, what can I do? What can I do next? How can I help? And, you know, just taking ownership. You know, that that in, you know, sowing into the ministry for so many years and laboring in the ministry and so much of the time feeling like, oh, Lord Jesus. (laughs) The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. To see people standing up and taking ownership, to see those that are just like, okay, instead of just waiting, you know, and see if, you know, maybe they don't get asked to do something or whatever, but instead of just waiting, but standing up and just taking ownership, oh, what a blessing, because you're getting, you're getting an understanding of the labor in the kingdom, because it takes all of this to do what God's called us to do. It takes all of this to go around the world on, on YouTube. It takes this, what you do, putting your hand to the plow, and it does not go unnoticed. And you don't want too much thanks from man because you want to lay up your treasures in heaven and you want to receive all of your treasures there. I was thinking about that today. That hit me today. I'm like, Lord, when we stand before your throne, thinking about the treasures that are laid up there, and we look around, Lord, I I want my pile to be big. I want my treasures to be laid up there, not here. We don't this is the moment, guys. We're 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 guaranteed 70 years upon the on this earth. This is a moment. It's here today and gone tomorrow. Scripture says it says the flower of the field, it says the grass of the field. It's here today and it withers tomorrow. Don't put your hope and your trust and and all of your time into this life because it's gonna all be gone but totally be kingdom-minded all the time. What am I doing right now for the kingdom? How am I living for the kingdom? How am I giving myself for the kingdom? It's all about the kingdom. It's all about laying up treasures in heaven and living. And if you're full of the Holy Ghost, you're going to be doing that. If you're full of the fire of the Holy Ghost, and if you're not full of the fire of the Holy Ghost, then you're in danger of being lukewarm or cold. Cold is straight on their way to hell. And I surely wouldn't want to be spewed out of God's mouth. Because that's major rejection. That's rejection. We don't want to be lukewarm. We want to be red hot on fire in the fire. 
We want our first love to always be our first love every moment. So we have to be aware of what's going on around us. So we'll go on here. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, he goes around as a roaring lion, lion seeking. He walks about seeking whom he may devour. Okay? So whom, this is what you do. You resist him steadfast in the faith. You resist him. Okay, so people, people have battles that they're going through. And I, and I just told you the way out of every battle, out of every sin that has tried to grip you, is staying full of the fire of the Holy Ghost. But people have these reoccurring things that they're dealing with, and then they begin to see people getting, you know, demonized and, um, you know, people praying for them, the demons cast out and stuff, and then they begin to wonder if they have demons and all this kind of stuff. You know, because the enemy, he's going around, and he's just like, he's just like bombarding you with all these thoughts and all of these things and telling you that you've got this wrong or that wrong. And, you know, just to continue, he's the accuser of the brethren. And he's always accusing you to you and you to God and you to everybody else. So if you're hearing an accusation about something, somebody, realize that you're not thinking, that it didn't, that thought may not have been conceived by you. But it is birthed straight out of hell. And you don't want to partake with the deceiver, the, the accuser of the brethren. You don't want to be his brother speaking his lies. You don't want to be birthed from him. So don't join your tongue with him. Cast those things down. Those are things that when they hit your mind, you cast them down. But the enemy is always bombarding you with these things. And you just like, you know, people come up to the altar and altar again and again, and they can't seem to get free. The scripture says, resist him steadfast in the faith. Resist the devil. In James, it says, resist the devil. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And what's he got to do? So you have all power and authority to resist him. You have the blood of Jesus Christ, and all the demons of hell go, <laughs> when they see the blood. You know, just go, the blood's over me. I paint myself with the blood of Jesus Christ. I like that. Just painted with the blood of Jesus Christ. The devil can't come near me. I've got the blood of Jesus Christ. He can look bad and scary all he wants to out there. But I have all power and authority in the name of Jesus Christ. He has no power over me. He cannot force me to do anything. Now, there are there are people that are out of their mind, demon-possessed, insane, that need to be delivered. But God's saints need to learn that it's very simple. Resist him steadfast in the, in the faith. Realize that Satan is going around accusing you to you and everyone else to you and God to you, and it's a lie, and you resist it. So you have a battle. You have something coming out against you, and it comes out against you again and again. So you stand there like a good soldier with the sword in your hand, the word of God. You stand there full of the Spirit, full of the fire of God, filled up through prayer, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, built up strong, having on the whole armor of God. And you stand there in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, that you've made me more than a conqueror. I thank you, Father, that you delivered me from every work of the devil. I thank you, Jesus, that you set me free. I thank you, Jesus, that you've given me all power and authority in the name of Jesus Christ and by the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, that you've made me more than a conqueror. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done. You stand and you speak the word of truth. I don't know anywhere in the scripture where there's a whole lot of conversation with the devil. I just thank Jesus for what he's done. And I let the angels of heaven take care of that old serpent, that dragon, the devil. I just say what Jesus has done in me. I don't want to get in dialogue with him. I don't like him. Matter of fact, I hate him. He's the only person we can hate. He's the only being that we can hate. There's a devil in all of his imps. We can hate them. We hate everything that uh, Satan has. And therefore, if we hate it, what in the world are we doing doing it? Amen? We want to be like Jesus. We want to look like Jesus. 
And it's all holiness, purity, and righteousness. It's all glory. It's all living in realms of heaven today. It has no immorality with it. And I tell you, even people that are in the world, when they're caught up in sin, and they get involved in sin, you know, any kind of cheating, you know, marital, marital cheating and things like that, going on adultery and fornication, you know, even sinners feel miserable about what they've done. They feel miserable. I mean, there's some that's so full of the devil that maybe they don't. But they hate their life. They're, they're not happy. They don't have joy unspeakable and full of glory. When they look over and they see somebody shining with the glory and the love of Jesus, they're just like, what do you, what do you got? What happened to you? Because they're, they're in misery. And how much more a saint of God if we are convinced by the deceiving powers of darkness to go over into the enemy's camp and mess around in his garbage. How much more is our heart pricked and broken when we've tasted and seen how good God is and how glorious he is and how wonderful he is. How miserable it is to take part in anything but his glory. We want to press on in for more of the realms of heaven. We want to see Jesus. We want to surrender everything. We don't want to hold on to anything in our life, but we want to, to, to be totally given over to the Father so his light can shine in us so we can go from glory to glory. We don't want to hold on to our life, even being cute. You know, girls have trouble with being cute and how to, you know, wear the proper clothing and keep themselves covered because they just want to be in style. Well, I mean, be in style the best you can. But remember, who made, who, who's doing these styles? How about some holy, righteous people standing up? And let's look, let's look, let's look into the Word of God. And I'm getting over here on this spot, what Pastor Mark was talking about the other night. But look over into the Word of God, and let's see when the angel appeared to uh, Mary, what did he look like? When the angels appeared in the tomb, what were they wearing? Uh, you know, that's, that's real interesting to me. When Jesus appeared to John on the Isle of Patmos, what did it say he looked like? Let's see. Hmm. He had on this gown. Okay, no. <laughs> but he did. You know, when I think about this, these things, but it, and it went to his foot. It went to his feet. And he was girded about with a golden girdle. And, um, you know, you just think about, you think about this. You know, when people see people in heaven and they have visions of angels in the heaven, what do they look like? Anyway. Holiness, holiness unto the Lord, holiness unto the Lord. We just want to be holiness unto the Lord. We don't want to be caught up in the clothing, though, and whether we're wearing makeup or how long our hair is and stuff like that, because people get caught up in that, and they make a religion, and they never do anything with their life. So we don't want to get, be caught up in that, but we want to be caught up in love relationship and just being like Jesus and just being in fellowship with him and not letting anything block that relationship for us to go deeper and deeper into the realms of his glory. Nothing blocking that relationship, full of the fire and the Holy Ghost, continually giving ourselves over to the realms of his glory. In uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, and this is very important because this is the atmosphere. It's not just people that are talking and speaking out things, but it's the atmosphere that we deal with in this time because the church has become so lax so Laodicean, so allowing the enemy to have place in their life. But there were, there were false prophets also among the people, 